I don't know why I'm trying to do an outro right now. This is literally the intro of a video, but what else was I going to say? Hello, welcome, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Mary, and today's video is going to be my first ever secret TBR reading vlog. So when I'm filming this, it is January 31st. I think this is going to go up sometime in the beginning of March. Because I'm going to spend all of February, pretty much, reading books that were recommended to me by you guys. So, it's not really that much of a secret, because I literally asked for recommendations on multiple platforms. So, not really that shocking. But, I'm going to be randomly generating, because I got 39 responses. Let me I made a Google Doc of all the books that were recommended to me by friends, family members, and subscribers slash followers on different platforms. So... I have 38 things as of right now. Technically, I said on my video where I asked for this for YouTube subscribers to give me um, recommendations, I said you had until midnight on the 31st, but I'm going to pick my first book now, and if I get any more before midnight central time, then I'll, I'll add them to the list and I'll let them be up for draw for next time. But the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to randomly generate a number 1 through 38 and I have to put my glasses on. I took them off because I have a ring light, so it like reflects that and it's kind of annoying, but I need them to see. But I just thought I would catch you up. I, I could screen record, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to show you my screen. So let me do that now. Okay, so I've got it on random number generator and we have 38 options. So I'm going to input 38 here. And the first book is going to be number 28, which is... Silas Marner, recommended to me by Donut. Okay, I had to do some digging around, and apparently it's Silas with an A, not a U, so I think I spelled it wrong. But <laughs> I'm going to read this book. It's by George Eliot, um, and it is a classic, and I'm just going to read you from my computer the Goodreads blurb. And it says, a wrongly accused of theft and exiled from a religious community many years before, the embittered weaver Silas Marner lives alone in Ravelo, living only for work and his precious hoard of money. But when his money is stolen and an orphan child finds her way to his house, Silas is given the chance to transform his life. His fate, and that of Epi, the little girl he adopts, is entwined with Godfrey Cass, son of the village squire, who, like Silas, is trapped by his past. Silas Marner apparently was George Eliot's favorite of her novels. If you don't know, George Eliot is the pen name for Mary Ann... What is it? Mary Ann Evans. Um, and this was written in... is published in 1861. So... Um, another classic to add to my TBR. So I'm going to be trying to read this during the first week of February, as well as the other stuff that I'm trying to read right now. If you haven't seen my February TBR, I'll link it. It probably doesn't matter at this point because when you're seeing this, it's March. I need to get that in my head. But yeah, I just wanted to pick this on camera for you. And when I finish that, I'll pick my next one from the little group. Um, I'm planning, like I mentioned, on doing one a week. So hopefully I can stick to that. That'll be four books recommended by you guys. Um, I hope you enjoy. Um, I'll stay, stay tuned for my thoughts on Silas Marner. Okay, I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh my god. It's like 36 Bluetooth degrees out. Connection. Oh, fuck. Bluetooth connection success. Sorry. It's like 36 degrees out and I'm like sweating because I just walked from campus back to my car. I park at this church behind me. Um, it's off campus, but uh, it's free. So, you know, how it is. But I, it's Monday, January, or no, February 1st. And I thought I would check in because yesterday I said that I was going to randomly generate books um, for my secret TBR. I lied. Um, I realized that I didn't have an audiobook to listen to today while I was going to be getting ready this morning and then like walking to class and stuff. Um, and especially days, I always listen to an audiobook, I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this before, when I'm walking my dogs and stuff, but I also like to have an audiobook to listen to when I'm walking up to campus. Um, I can listen to music or podcasts or whatever, but I just, especially this month since I need to get a lot of reading done, a good way to, to do that seems to be through audiobooks. So, sorry for the shaky cam, I'm rolling my sleeves up. Anyways, I went through the list of things that people have recommended me, and one of the books that somebody recommended, I don't know who it was right now, but I'll probably look and remember later, um, is Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine. Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine. I don't know how her name is pronounced, but by Gail Honeyman, and I got that as an audiobook because I've been listening to that all morning. It's like one o'clock now, um, and I've listened to, I think, like five hours of it, and it's like 11 hours long, um, which is really like two and a half hours because uh, I listen on two times speed, but... Um, it's pretty good so far. 
and it's about this woman, Eleanor Oliphant, who has had some traumatic experiences in her life, and it sounds like she has OCD or something, because she's, like, odd, but not in a, like, quirky way, more in a, like, she doesn't know how to react in social situations, she's very direct with the way she speaks, um, she has a routine, she does certain things on certain days, and that's just how she likes it, and she sort of seems to obsess over certain things, um, and then you find out that her mom is institutionalized in some sense. Um, you don't really know what happened, but it's, she has like a really rocky relationship with her mom. She doesn't know her dad. She's in her 30s. She works in account receivables for some company. And the whole thing is that like she's alone, but she's fine with that. And at the beginning of the book, she meets this man, doesn't even meet, she sees this man and sort of becomes obsessed with him. And also she's developing a friendship with an, one of the IT guys at her work. Uh, I don't know if she realizes she's developing a friendship with him, but she kind of is. And it's just sort of about her life. Um, and it's almost, it's not quite a stream of, stream of consciousness novel, I don't think, but it like almost reads as one because of the way in which she narrates all of her interactions and interlaces her own thoughts. Um, and that's really interesting. It's really, really well written, but I don't know that I like the character of Eleanor. She's very annoying to me, but I am really enjoying my experience listening to that. So I just wanted to check in and let you know that. Um, I've read like not even the first chapter of Silas Marner. Um, like I said, I got that on my phone last night. I read through a tiny bit of it yesterday, and then I read a little bit of it in between classes today, but um, I don't know any more about it than what I told you yesterday. I just want to check in with you and let you know what I'm reading. Hello, um, I'm in my kitchen again. I just wanted to check in. Um, it's like Tuesday of the week after I updated this vlog last. Um, I vlogged in between this, uh, which was my Lord of the Rings reading vlog, which I'll link somewhere uh, so you can watch that if you're interested. But I just wanted to let you guys know that I actually finished Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine about a week ago. <laughs> or like maybe five, six days ago. Um, and I gave it three stars. I enjoyed the beginning of it a lot more than I enjoyed the end of it. And I can appreciate, so the tone shifts throughout the book from this like, not fully happy-go-lucky, but like kind of like, oh, she's fine, she's lonely, but everything's fine, like a typical contemporary um, sort of tone, and it gets really dark as it goes on. And then, in my opinion, it got really, really, really dark and then sort of resolved too quickly, and I, I wanted more from that story. I don't know, I just feel like this book tried to do so much, and in my opinion, it wasn't super successful in all of that. Um, I did think it was a really well done character study of Eleanor. Um, I'm interested in, like, I was interested in hearing about her life and her childhood, etc. I do appreciate the recommendation, and I know that this is a super well loved book. I just think it wasn't quite for me, but I did enjoy it for the most part. The other thing that I thought was weird, a big, like, premise of this book is the idea that, um, or Eleanor sort of has this weird obsession with a guy in a band, and I thought it was just strange. I don't know. And I, I just didn't buy into that fully, I guess. So that those are my thoughts on Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. I feel like that book is completely fine. Um, and I do understand why people love it. And I do think it's it's definitely for a, a, like a group of people. I think like that's the type of book that I think my mom and my sisters would really enjoy. I can't quite pinpoint exactly why it wasn't for me. Um, except to say that I just felt like as interested as I was in the characters and their lives, it, I don't know, certain things about it kind of bothered me and just the way that it concluded didn't quite sit well with me. I'm still working on Silas Marner. I haven't read any more than I did the last time. I had trial competition all last week, so <laughs> I didn't really read anything. I'm way behind on my daily page counts, but I read a lot over the weekend. Um, I just read Lord of the Rings, but that helped substantially. So, but yes, that's my update for right now. Um, it's 11.51. I have class at 2.30 today and then I have class at 5. So yeah, I'm just doing some, some reading before my classes and then I will go to class. I don't know where I'm going with that. Okay, talk to you soon. Bye. It has yet again been over a week, I think, since I've updated this vlog, but I should have inserted some videos, footage of the snow. 
Um, I live in Arkansas. It doesn't really, like, it snows here, but it doesn't, like, snow snow. Um, we've gotten, like, over a foot of snow, which is unheard of for me. I've never seen this much snow in a place that I've lived in my entire life. Also, it was negative 20 when I tried to take my dogs outside on Tuesday, which is the coldest recorded temperature of all time where I live. Um, so, and I don't really care. I don't care who you are. That's cold. All right. People like to make fun of people in the South because we can't handle the cold, but like negative 20 is that's fucking cold. Okay. But all of that to say, Murphy's laying up here, but you can't see him. Murphy, you want to come here? He said, no, thank you. I'm very comfortable. All that to say, I wanted to update you on what I'm reading for this subscribers pick what I read vlog. Oh, and I have my laptop. Let me grab that. I don't know if I mentioned this in another vlog, but I, I got a new laptop. Also, if you've noticed my videos are edited a different way, I'm thinking about buying Filmora for my computer to like, what's it called? Edit my videos. Um, it's like a better editing software because the editing software, they have a video editor that comes on Microsoft computers, which is what I have. It's not very good and I can't insert like overlays. So like pictures, um, I'm going to try to figure out how to do that because when I'm obviously I'm going to be in this video, I'm talking about books that I'm reading, but I don't have a physical copy of the books because I'm pretty much just doing audiobooks and ebooks for this project. Um, but I don't have a way to overlay a picture. So that kind of sucks. Okay. So last time we spoke, I had finished Gail Honeyman's Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. And that was recommended to me by Roxanne Lim. Thank you, Roxanne. And I believe prior to that, I was reading Silas Marner, which Donut recommended to me, uh, by George Eliot. And <laughs> I feel really bad about this. I read like half of the first chapter of that book, but also this month I read Sense and Sensibility and Voltaire, or Candide by Voltaire. And I just wasn't in the mood for it. So I, um, I sort of, I just stopped reading it completely. Um, it just wasn't holding my attention. I will probably eventually go back to it and read it. I have it on my big, like, books I want to read list now. So eventually I think I will get to it. Um, but I only have books. It was an ebook that I checked out from my library and they automatically get returned to the library after you've had them for two weeks. And after two weeks, I'd read like eight pages. So <laughs> I let it go back and I don't think I'm going to try to get it again. But in the interim, I have since downloaded the audiobook of a night film by Marisha Pessel and it's amazing. So I've listened to like nine hours of it. It's a 23 hour audiobook. I listen to audiobooks in two times speed, yada, yada, yada. So I've listened to just under five hours, um, actually of it, like of my actual time. But anyways, I listened to probably like two hours last night. Um, it was so good or it is so good. It's still going. But it's basically this thriller about this guy. I'm not going to remember the character names because when I'm not reading them, I don't like hold on to them as well. Also, he doesn't really, I don't know if it's, it might be written in first person. I can't remember now that I'm trying to think about it, but he doesn't use his name or the narrator doesn't use his name a whole lot. So I think his name's Scott, but he's a journalist. I'm getting so sidetracked. He's this journalist who his career sort of ended because he tried to do this expose on a really famous horror film director guy who lives as a recluse um, and nobody like nobody knows what he looks like and he's written all these or written and directed all these films that are like all set on his or like filmed on his property and edited on his property and stuff and so he never leaves um, and there's all these like weird stories about him and he has kids but he he's had I think like two of his wives have died mysteriously or something so there's all sorts of like creepy stories and like just conspiracies surrounding him. Um, and so this journalist is trying to, at the beginning when we meet him, was trying to crack this case and he, his career basically ended because he followed a tip that he couldn't substantiate. And so his paper got sued and he got sued for defamation and all this stuff sort of happened and that's before we meet him. Um, and when this, this story kicks off is because uh, Cordova, who's the famous director, his daughter killed herself. Um, and she's in her 20s. And Scott thinks he saw her right before she died. And he is just sort of trying to figure out, I guess, why she killed herself, um, or if there was foul play involved. And they're uncovering all these things. And he like, he his the first couple of like witnesses that he talks to, one of them went to camp with her when they were kids. And another one of them, um, 
like is was a big fan of Cordova's work or something and so like you're figuring out these things about them um but he's with this 19 year old girl Nora who's from Florida and she came up because she wants to be an actress so she's living in New York now um and she's basically homeless so Scott has her come live with him and then the other guy's name is Hopper I think and we don't really know a lot about Hopper he's kind of sketchy to me but also they're they're just working as this trio now which is really fun and they keep uncovering like these like seedy underground things like there's um, message boards and like there's part Cordova's Cordova's works stopped being shown in, in movies or in <laughs> stopped being shown in theaters and um became like illegal to own and so there's like um all of this there's this movement to go and buy his works off the, the dark web and have them destroyed because they mess with people's brains um, which is really interesting, and there's, uh, but it sounds like his films have a lot of, like, I don't know if you're, so, I, I don't want to treat you like you're dumb, but I didn't know what this was for a long time, um, I think they're snuff films, which a snuff film is, I mean, traditionally, it's, like, the sexual violence portrayed in films is real, um, which is pretty scary, but a lot of times it just means that, like, like, I don't recommend you watch this movie, but there's a movie called Cannibal Holocaust, and in Cannibal Holocaust, it was basically framed as an entirely snuff film, and it turns out it wasn't. Um, but the actors in the movie didn't surface, resurface until like two years after the movie came out. They like went into hiding as part of their contract for being in this film. I think it was that kind of thing where people weren't sure, or people aren't sure if Cordova's films are real or not. Um, I will say, if you remember me talking about when I read A Little Life uh, by Hani Yanakari, I won't get into it again. I really, that book really put me off. Um, but my favorite part of that book was that one of the characters in that book was an actor, and Yanagihari always, I think that's Yanagihara, is that her name? I can't remember how it's, it's pronounced now. I looked it up at one point, but anyways, the author always talks about how, always explains what Willem's films are about and the roles that he plays, and I thought that was so interesting. So, but in Night Film, the author will describe some of the films just like a bare bones concept. Of, or just even a title of what Cordova's films are. Um, and so she doesn't tell you why they're so disturbing or like really describe any gory details, but you can imagine them yourself because she just gives you a small snippet of it and then you're able to like come up with a plot that would really disturb people or disturb you, which I just think is a really cool way to go about it. So I'm, I'm not even halfway through that book yet and I'm really loving it. So shout out to you, Megan. Thank you for <laughs> recommending it to me because I'm quite enjoying it. Um, so I'm hoping to finish that this week. I don't know what else I'm going to try to read. Um, I might try to get Pet by a Quakey Amezi, which Books with Clementine recommended to me. I don't know if that's how the author's name is pronounced. Um, but I believe there's an audiobook of that as well. So just whenever I finish Night Film, I will get a different audiobook. I think that's the way I'm going to go about this. But I wanted to update you guys and let you know that I am reading that and really liking it. So I think I might have found a home run. I might have found a home run. What do you think about that, Murphy? I don't know what else I'm going to do today. I took some pictures for my makeup Instagram earlier today. Um, I'm doing like project pan stuff over on Instagram. If you care about that kind of thing, I can leave that Instagram link down below. It's Mary Hedrick makeup. Um, I just think it's fun, but anytime I use up a product, I take a picture of it. Or if I like, I'm doing a pan those eyes for shadows project pan, um, which I get it. If you're just here for books, you don't care about that. But can you hear him snoring? Are you snoring? You silly boy. Okay, bye. <laughs> You don't wanna give in Sounds like we're just talking in riddles Five in the morning All we do is fighting Thought you'd come and make it right I need a pause from the battle But I don't think you're settled You don't wanna get it right I will leave it up to you I will leave it up to you Now I'm done and down the line I will leave it up to you 
22nd, I think, of February. And it's actually part of my spring break, <laughs> which is kind of weird. Instead of doing spring break this semester, like a traditional week-long spring break, um, the university I go to for law school has decided to do um, multiple, like, shorter breaks throughout the semester where we don't have classes, but we still, like, some professors are still doing, like, virtual class. I don't really understand the point of it, to be completely honest with you. But it is what it is. So that's what's happening today. That's why it's like 9.30 and I'm still, I would normally be in a class on campus, but I'm um, at home, uh, not on campus. So I made myself some avocado toast and it's pretty good. What you doing? Um, I just wanted to, I guess, update you guys with my reading but first um because i don't have class today that means i can like be out and about all day um so i made a vet appointment for him because over the weekend we found him being really like sensitive to his ear being touched and when i looked inside of it he had some like blood and like it looked like dried blood or like scabbing so we're going to get him checked out to see if um he might have ear mites or he could have an ear infection um, it could also be just that he scratched himself too hard and hurt his ear, but usually when they're scratching that hard, that's because something itches. Um, and so if he has an, an ear infection, obviously he'll be on antibiotics, and if he has ear mites, I don't know what the, the protocol is for that, but he'll have to be on some kind of medicine to get rid of the mites. But, but that's what I'm doing today at 3. I also have new glasses coming in, which is good because I have a new prescription. I went to the eye doctor a couple weeks ago and found out I needed a new prescription, and I went online to Zenny, so I'll show you my glasses when they come in. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to update you. I'm almost finished with night film. I'm not as enjoying it as much towards the end as I was at the beginning. At the beginning, I was really into it, and I was very interested with what was going on. Um, I think I already explained, but it follows a reporter and these two other people that he meets who are somehow connected to this film director. Um, and he's this, like, really famous cult classic film director who does horror films, and um, he always lived by himself in this uh, mansion on top of a hill or whatever in the countryside. And he has a daughter who just committed suicide at the beginning of the novel. So that's sort of why this reporter is looking into him. What I can't figure out is why... So the reporter thinks that something's going on with Cordova. And the last time he tried to look into Cordova's life, um, he followed a tip that was false or that couldn't be proven. And so he lost basically all his respect as a journalist. And so now he's like taking it really personally. And he thinks... I guess that Cordova had something to do with his uh, 20, 24, 25 year old daughter committing suicide, which maybe he did, maybe he didn't, but it's sort of like, it's, it's interesting because it describes a lot of what happens in the films as it like parallels real life. Um, and I believe that if you have a physical copy of this book, it comes with like an online link that you can look at like the actual news articles and stuff where they're supposed to be inserted online. Um, I don't have that. I just have the audiobook, so I'm just listening to it. But it's a good audiobook, and it's that part, like the multimedia facet of it, makes it really interesting. Um, Murphy's crawling under the covers. Murphy, what are you doing? I just made the bed. I didn't really make the bed. I just moved it out. But it's a very interesting book, and it's really like intense. Um, and it has to do. It's it's throwing in a lot of like different things. Like there's like maybe an occult element, and there's um, a lot of people who you don't really know who they are and just the mystery behind Cordova because he doesn't really come out and about. He's got this assistant. Um, her last name's Gaio. I can't remember her first name now. She's been his assistant for however long and he doesn't make any public appearances. She's even collected awards for him. So there's like, there are um, web pages that are really hard to get into that are completely dedicated to just fan theory on him. And so it's it's a very interesting concept, I think. But the more, like, I guess concrete things that Scott, the main character, the journalist, seems to figure out, the less, like, intrigued I am. Um, I have about two hours left of the audiobook, so I should finish it while I'm getting ready. Um, I listen to my audiobooks on two times speed, so it should take me a little under an hour. Um, I'll let you know how I feel when it, like, finally finishes, but the way it's wrapping up so far, I'm not super into, and I feel like this is... It went from being, like... 
I started it and I was like, oh, this will be a four star for sure. And then I got a little farther and I was like, oh my God, maybe this is a five star. And now I'm like, maybe it's a three star. I don't really care about it anymore. Um, so I don't know. I haven't obviously gathered all of my thoughts, but I just feel like there's so many loose ends that unless it's tied up in a certain way, I don't think it's going to be above a three star for me. Also, I'm not going to tell you which movie it reminds me of, but there's a couple of different movies that this is reminding me of. They're not necessarily like detective movies, but if I tell you what movies they are, I think it'll give away what I think is going to happen. And if it happens or if it doesn't, I don't really want to spoil that for you because I think that's part of the charm of the book is not knowing what's real and what's not, I guess, or like not, not really knowing what's going on and like why. But it is reminding me of a movie that, <laughs> to be honest with you, I like in retrospect, but I remember when I watched it, I was so mad at the ending. I was like, what the hell is this? even four. That's how I'm feeling right now, but I will update you, of course. Um, first, I will update you on Murphy's ear, and then I'll update you on how I feel about this book when I finish the book, finally. Hello, it's been several hours. I'm back from the vet. Um, <laughs> turns out poor Murph has an ear infection, uh, so we have drops that we have to put in his ear every day, and I'll spare you the gory details, but that's, we have to clean his ears out for him. Um, pretty gross, but overall, I'm glad I wasn't something worse. I was a little worried it was going to be ear mites, which I think are harder to get rid of than an infection. So, all in all, I'm pleased, <laughs> and I'm pleased that we got to the bottom of it and figured it out. But I also ran to the library, so I have a library haul. Um, kind of a big one, actually. But... Uh, if you've seen my TBR for March, you've seen all, if not most, sorry, most, if not all of these. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. I have uh, Percy Jackson and the Olympians, The Lightning Thief. I got nervous that this was not what I wanted. But yes, uh, by Rick Riordan. Very excited for this one. We have Song of Solomon by Toni Morrison. Very excited about this one. I think I haven't decided yet. But my friend Patience recommended that I read this, um, which if you've watched my Bookopoly TV, or Bookopoly, if you've watched my Sorry Fix My TBR, then you already know that Patience recommended this to me. But I'm thinking I might put this in this vlog, like read this in this vlog. So if I do, you'll know before I do. Um, then I have The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein, which I might not have talked about, but I am reading for a secret TBR. I have Days of Blood and Starlight. This is chunkier than I thought it was going to be, which is a sequel to Daughter of Smoke and Bone, which I'm still reading. I'm buddy reading these, or this whole series, with Kelly from the Velvet Library. And to be honest with you, at this point, I have not asked Kelly if she is planning on reading this in March, um, because we just started Daughter of Smoke and Bone yesterday. So I think we're planning on reading this in March, but if not, then I'll just extend my loan of it until April or whatever, but I have the Happy Ever After playlist by Abby Jimenez. Very exciting. That's like a, an adult romance, and it's a sequel to a book that I read in January. And then I have Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney. There's more. Okay, these are the last two. Gosh, that was loud. Okay, I have Lent by Joe Walton and Packing for Mars by Mary Roach. And I'm really excited for my upcoming vlogs. I know I maybe I shouldn't plug vlogs that are coming up in the future in vlogs that I'm filming right now, but, um, what was I going to say? Oh, but I am doing, I have two secret TBRs planned to do videos of, which I'm really excited about. And it's not really a secret TBR because I've told you all of the books that I'm reading for them. You just don't know which books I'm reading just because, which books go to a secret TBR and which books, um, and which secret TBR it is, if that makes sense. So I'm really excited about that. I think it's fun. I wanted to update you that I did finish a night film, or just, I think it's night film. I don't think there's an article in front of it. But it ended, I feel kind of mad about the ending, to be honest with you. I was okay with it, and then something happens at the very end, and I was like, I don't know how I feel about this. I hit it three stars. Um, I didn't really feel like the characters went anywhere, um, which characters don't have to. Characters can just stay stagnant, and I can still enjoy a book. But it just felt kind of off. And I mentioned this in my Goodreads review, but I don't understand why the mystery even started. So what Kickstarts Night Film is that the daughter of a famous, very like reclusive film director commits suicide. And she's like 24, so it's kind of a shock, but she used to be like a piano prodigy, and there's all this stuff about her. Um, but what Kickstarts this story is that she commits suicide in an abandoned building, and this guy who 
I feel like I've mentioned this like a thousand times, but I just don't understand how that is a mystery. I didn't feel like the author did a good enough job of explaining what he was trying, what Scott, the main character, was trying to uncover in his previous attempt at like unearthing something about Cordova. But anyways, I gave it three stars. I really enjoyed so much of it, but it just overall, the plot let me down, I think. And I just felt very meh about certain plot devices that the author used. I have a review on Goodreads that has spoilers marked out and I talk about exactly what it is. So if you've read the book and you'd like to know, I'll try to remember to link that review down below. But in the interim, I have started High Fire by, I don't know how his name is pronounced, Aoyne Colfer? Oin Colfer? It's an Irish name, like a Gaelic spelling, and I can't, it's like Saoirse Ronan, how, or Saoirse? I, I don't even know if that's, which is the right one, or like Siobhan. The name Siobhan. Um, anyways, I don't know how exactly it's pronounced, but he wrote the Artemis Fowl series. So I was under the impression that High Fire was going to be another middle grade, but I think it's adult based on the amount of cursing and like sexual innuendos and um, like use of drugs and alcohol. Uh, I assume it's an adult book, but it's really interesting. So it's set in the Bayou of Louisiana and I'm not very far into it and I haven't looked at what it's about on Goodreads. Like I haven't read a synopsis, but it follows a dragon named Vern who lives in Louisiana. And I think he's trying to lay low with the, the like alligators in the bayou. And there's a 15 year old boy whose mother is, whose dad has left and his mom is kind of being harassed by a local police chief. And it seems like the police chief is kind of involved in some sort of crime syndicate that's going on. So that's all we really have so far. I'm only two chapters in, but again, I have it as an audiobook, So hopefully I'll be able to get through it. And I'm really, really excited to be reading that. But yes, that's the only, those are the only updates that I have for you guys. This weekend is really exciting because Matt and I are going to go to my parents' house. Um, and my sister, who lives in Hawaii, has some leave time that she is able to take. So she and her husband and their daughter, my niece, are flying in um, on Wednesday of this week. So I'm going to see them this weekend. And I haven't seen my niece since January of 2020. Um, which is when I met her. I flew out to Hawaii to meet them, or meet her, and um, I'm really excited to see her because it's been so long. I probably won't vlog this weekend, but that's what I'm doing, and I'm very excited about it. So that's my little library book haul and my little status update with how I'm doing with my reading. Um, I think I'm gonna continue reading. Um, I'm probably gonna make some fried rice for dinner. I always tell you guys what I'm eating, and then I rarely show it. I don't know why I'm always like, I guess because I'm, I'm literally always thinking about food constantly. If I'm thinking about anything, it's like what I want to eat next. Um, I might watch some YouTube too. Like I mentioned earlier, it's my spring break today and tomorrow. So I do have to work on a paper <laughs> that I have to write. Um, I just have to have an outline done by Thursday and I have a shocking amount done on that. So I definitely need to work on that, but um, that's really it. So hello, it's now Thursday, I think. Um, <laughs> I bleached my hair. It came out not great, but I wasn't expecting it to come out super great. Um, this is a first bleach. You remember what my hair looked like before. That was with one round of color remover because I've been dyeing my hair dark brown for the past year, a little over a year. Um, but when I did the color remover, I hadn't had my hair touched up in like six weeks. Um, and I did that back in December. And then I bleached it, obviously it's the end of February now, so. I'm gonna wait two weeks and then do a second round of bleach with, um, I used the, so I used Color Oops Color Remover and then I also used the Color Oops Conditioning Bleach. Um, I don't think it did a bad job, like, but I, I think I did a bad job. I'm not very good at doing my own hair um, and I panicked because it was bleach and I wanted to make sure I wasn't gonna ruin my hair. Um, it's still fine. It's like soft and silky, which don't be jealous of me. My hair tends to do really well. I think Murphy's at the door and wants to come in, but my hair does tend to do really well with like color treatments and stuff. Um, so there's that. Come on in. Good boy. Hi. Yes. Hello. Um, I know you're all probably so concerned. Murphy's ear is looking much better. We've been using his eardrops and it's not as like gross as it was. I won't, I'll spare you the gory details. But I came on here because I wanted to let you know that I finished High Fighter by Owen Colfer. Um, that's the other thing. His name is Owen, not Aoyne or whatever I was trying to say. Um, I knew I was pronouncing it wrong, but I didn't realize how like simple of a name it actually is. So yes, I finished that. Um, and I actually loved it. I ended up really, really enjoying it. It was about a four point, like it was a very high four star on Call Pile. So I gave it five stars on Goodreads. 
um, just because I did enjoy it that much and I don't really do, Goodreads doesn't allow half stars and I don't do half stars, but if I did, it would probably be a 4.5, but honestly, Clem, you did a great job. Books with Clementine recommended that one to me and thank you so much because I loved it. It was exactly what I needed. It's just like lighthearted and funny and like very crude humor, which I don't mind. Um, I think it can grind my gears in certain contexts, but just the writing style of Owen Colfer is so good. It makes me want to go back and read Artemis Fowl because I never read that series. I can't stop staring at the way this makeup looks because like it doesn't look bad, but it just doesn't look like something that I would have done. I don't know what is going on with it, but anyways, this was a journey this morning. I don't know what I was trying to do, but also my glasses never arrived. The original ETA was Tuesday, but it's the package like tracking, uh, the package tracker hasn't been updated since the 16th and it's now the 25th. So I don't think that's going to happen. And they changed the ETA from Tuesday, which was two days ago, to no ETA. Um, I just wanted to pop in and let you know how much I enjoyed and would highly recommend um, High Fryer. If you are in the mood for something like light, fl fluffy, funny, it's a very unique concept. It's a dragon living in the bayou of Louisiana. A troublemaking teenage boy comes across him and then starts like working for him. There's like a dirty cop and like, I don't know. It's just, it's just super fun, I thought. So I did highly enjoy that one. Um, yeah, I would recommend it. started um, Song of Solomon by Toni Morrison and I am enjoying it so far. Um, I'm only like 50 pages in so I have about 280 pages to go but I'm hoping I can finish it by tomorrow so I can edit and upload this video by Thursday. It's Tuesday today by the way. Um, so I feel like I'm cutting it kind of close and I'm a little nervous about that but um, I'm enjoying it so far. Um, and then the other exciting thing that happened is I placed on hold, I don't know if you, you'll remember, well yeah, this will be the same vlog, I'm being dumb. A while ago I placed on hold the audiobook for Pet by Akwaiki Amezi, and um, I got it. So I got it on Sunday. Um, so I'm listening to that now as well. And I'm not gonna lie, I, I'm, I don't like it. <laughs> so it's about this girl, Jam, who is black and trans, and she lives in this place called Lucille, which um, I'm assuming it's like, a dystopian future kind of it's not really dystopian it's sort of at the stage where they think it's utopian but it's after this revolution has taken place and there used to be monsters and the prison system has been abolished and police I guess are eradicated or um, something and they think they've gotten rid of like racism and sexism and and they think they're in times of peace um, but uh, Jam's mom paints this creature um, Whisper, or her mother's name is Bitter, and Bitter is an artist, and she paints this, this thing, and it comes to life, and its name is Pet, and it tells Jam that there's a monster that needs to be eradicated, so, like, they didn't get all the monsters, um, and then it's about this, like, monster hunt of trying to find the monsters in this community, and I personally, there's a couple things that I'm not really loving. First of all, Jam reads as like an 11 year old girl, but I'm pretty sure she's supposed to be like 16, which is just very like not matching up to me or for me. Um, like I, I almost wish she was supposed to be younger because then I think it would make a lot more sense. And the other thing that I'm not super loving is this book feels very spoon fed. It's only about 200 pages. Um, 
So the author at the beginning had to do a lot of telling rather than showing. And it feels like, I mean, every author has like an agenda or whatever and like a message they're trying to give or most, a lot of authors do. Um, but it's like, this book is very obvious about that. And I wish, I wish it wasn't, I guess. I almost want to DNF it because I just don't really care. The only reason I don't want to DNF it is because I think it's, the characters are very interesting to me and I'm really enjoying Jam as a person. So she, like I said, she's black, she's trans. Um, and I like the idea that she lives in this world where all she had to do was tell her parents, hey, I'm a girl. And they were like, yes, you're a girl. And now she's gotten to have her surgery. She has a hormone implant. Like she's, she had hormone blockers when she was younger. I just, I'm really liking that there's a lot of acceptance woven into this story. And I do really see the value in that. Um, I also am really enjoying the representation of black people and black culture and black joy that's being portrayed. Um, Cause I think that's something that we don't get a lot of in books or we don't get enough of in books. But I just don't buy Jam's age. I, I just feel like a lot of the plot is being given to you and you're just supposed to accept it as it is. And that's not something that I enjoy from my books. So I do think it might be a me, not the book problem. Hello, um, it is the next day from, I think, I think I updated you on Tuesday and it's now Wednesday. I just wanted to let you know that I finished Pet by Akwike Ameze, I think is how that name is pronounced. Um, and I didn't like it. The other thing that I really didn't like about the book is that at the beginning of the book, the author basically like spoon feeds you all of this information. Um, and I felt like rather than taking the time to build this world and explain what had happened, um, or even just to like set the scene, the author just said the things basically that happened and like, I don't know, I just felt like the world building like, rather than the reader getting to experience it, it was just sort of told to you, um, which made it harder to buy into, I think. Also, I mean, the metaphor of like monsters versus angels is kind of obvious um, that like the angels are the good guys, the monsters, everybody else. Um, but I also just kind of felt like it was an oversimplification of human trauma and the human experience. I just felt like the way that the author handled the subject matter I didn't find was the best. I felt like it was very oversimplified. And also I'm very much in the minority in this opinion. A lot of people really love this book. That's all I really wanted to say about that. I'm still working on Song of Solomon by Toni Morrison. This is one of those books that I find it hard to describe exactly what it's about. Um, I had no idea what it was about going into it. I just knew that my friend Patience recommended it to me and that I'd been meaning to read more Toni Morrison. Um, like I mentioned, I've only read Beloved by her before this. And I think I actually might like this more than I liked Beloved. It was rocky at first. It took me a while to get into this, but it's kind of just like a family drama. I know I just said that I like books for the plot. Um, and then this is, it's not fully a character study, but it is sort of deep, a deep dive into these characters' lives and their family history. And it's kind of got a little bit of a mystery aspect, which I like as well. Um, but it follows uh, Milkman, who is the grandson of this, his town's only um, black doctor and it's about like how his parents kind of hate each other and his dad has this mysterious sister pilot who he his dad refuses to talk to and he's not allowed to see um and then pilot has a daughter but she's not married and her daughter has a daughter but she's not married either did that make sense <laughs> so pilot has a daughter reba and pilot didn't marry reba's dad and reba has a daughter Hagar, 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 I don't know how that's pronounced, but um, Reba doesn't, didn't marry Hagar or Hagar's dad. But um, anyways, it's very interesting and I'm, I feel like I'm understanding the title of it more, I just got to sort of where I'm understanding the title of it, if that makes sense. But there's just a lot of factors um, and what I, I'm really enjoying about this book is that it's going back and forth, um, not in like a whiplashy way. I feel like sometimes when timelines jump, I can get kind of confused and not really know where we are. Um, but it started when Milkman was a little boy and sort of told us a few snippets of his life. And then the most of the story, the bulk of the story is happening when Milkman is in his thirties. Um, and that's sort of like the present day for this book. But it also discusses 
his parents when they were younger and they got married and he, he has two older sisters who are both over a decade older than him and sort of their childhood is talked about a little bit and um, it's just all like uncovering just different like family secrets and things that people don't necessarily talk about very much. It's just, it's very interesting to me. I'm really enjoying it. Anyways, I am really enjoying this one and I'm very excited that I'm going to end this vlog with this. I'm hoping I can finish this book tonight so that I can finish editing this vlog and have it upload tomorrow. It's currently Wednesday, which I think I already mentioned, but so I don't know exactly which order. Did you hear that? Marble! Shh, come here. What are you barking? Come here. Come on. It's probably just a package, but we only use the back door of our house to take the dogs out. So whenever the doorbell rings, they run to the back door. Um, Murphy, oh my God. Look at that, he poked his head out right here. <laughs> Anyways, that's really all I had to update you on. So I'm gonna go <laughs> see what came to the door. Hello, I just wanted to pop on and say, oh. Yeah, I don't know if you can see me, it's kind of dark. Um, it's like 11.30 at night, but I did finally finish Song of Solomon. I really loved it. I actually think I might give it five stars. I cried twice at the end. So it did really, really get to me. And I felt like the more you got to know the characters um, in their, their sort of story, the more the movie, not the movie, the more the book like made sense and worked together. And I just really loved the way that everything was intertwined. Plus I think everyone knows Toni Morrison is like a master with words. Um, so I just, thought it was fantastic and I would highly, highly recommend to pretty much anyone. Also, my glasses came in, so these are them. They look pretty much the same as my other glasses, but they're kind of yellow instead of just clear because I thought that would be fun and quirky of me to do. So I just, I've finished editing the vlog up until this point. Um, so I wanted to f film this clip so I can edit this clip and then upload the whole vlog. But I did just want to check in and let you know that I finished that book. So I ended up reading five books for this vlog, which I don't think is bad. Um, I put one book down, so I would have had six if I had kept up with Silas Marner. Um, but alas, it was not to be. So I read Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman. The Night or Night Film by Marisha Pessel. High Fire by Owen Colfer. Um, Pet by Equiki. Imezi, and then, um, but not beloved. I'm losing my mind. Song of Solomon by Toni Morrison. I'm so tired. Um, but if you did finish this whole video, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you watched this far, please subscribe. Um, it would mean so much to me if you would. I have a couple of other really fun themed vlogs coming up and you can leave me comments down below if you want to guess what they are. As always, I appreciate all of these recommendations so much and even if I didn't like the book that you recommended to me or even if I didn't read the book that you recommended to me in this video, um, it still means the world to me that you would recommend me a book. Um, so yes, I appreciate it so, so much and I will see you in my next video. Bye! I should have told you that I loved you once